This video uh, on financial markets and interest rates will accompany your notes in managerial finance class. First of all, we're going to look at why it is that uh, managers need to understand financial markets. There are more reasons than this, but two basic reasons are these. First of all, we've established that the goal of the firm is to maximize stock price, that is for the corporation, to maximize shareholders' wealth. And so if that's the case, we need to understand the arena in which those stock prices are determined. Secondly, managers have to go to financial markets to raise funds to make value-creating investments. There's an old saying that we're all familiar with, I think, that it takes money to make money. If you think about the basic balance sheet where assets equals liabilities plus equity, then you understand that every asset, that is, those uh, things of value, items of value that we use to create wealth uh, for the, for the uh, owners, uh, that they have to be fu funded from somewhere. The money has to come from two basic sources, debt and equity financing. So once again, uh, we need to understand the markets uh, uh, that represent the source of funds that will allow us to make those value-creating investments. A market is a means or mechanism by which buyers and sellers come together for the purpose of conducting trade. It may have a physical existence, but it doesn't have to. If I asked you a question like, uh, hey, I'm going to the market today, can I get something for you? You would probably be thinking about uh, a grocery store, a farmer's market, or something like that. But if I said, um, hey, did you hear what the market did today? Then you're probably speaking about uh, financial markets, maybe the stock market, or maybe some specific index of stock price performance. So the, mar the term market can mean different things. Uh, markets are amazingly efficient in allocating resources, in responding to what it is that pr market participants uh, want and uh, therefore what is consumed and also, of course, what is produced based on what uh, produce producers can determine uh, cons consumers want. In a free market economy, trade takes place because buyer and seller each have something the other wants. All trade is voluntary. It's important to realize that, certainly as business people, that uh, we can't simply decide on our own what we want to produce, what we want to sell. We really have to think about others first. So despite the, the notion, that a widely held notion, that to be successful in business, you've got to think about me and mine and focus on uh, yourself and providing for yourself and uh, getting things from others, uh, the truth is to be successful in business, certainly over the long term, you have to have a, an other mindset, thinking about what others want. Uh, I like to say, and I may say it el elsewhere in this video or in the videos that I've <coughs> produced for the class, excuse me, <coughs> that uh, as a business owner, I cannot make anyone buy from me, sell to me, work for me, lend me money, invest in my business, or other otherwise deal favorably with me. To be successful, I have to think about what others want and uh, realize that in order to get the things I want out of life through my business, I have to provide things that others want as well. And so there is a, a, a very real um, effort to, let's say, uh, meet others halfway or at least to respond to what others want, a concern about what others want that characterizes successful businesses that very often is unappreciated, certainly by people in politics and, and even in the nonprofit world. In this system, assets are allocated among buyers via the price system. That means that goods end up in the hands of the highest bidder, those people both willing and able to pay the highest price. And similarly, invested funds end up in the hands of those firms that can promise and deliver the highest returns for the least risk. Later on, we'll see that the two primary characteristics of any investment are risk and return. Returns we like, that's the benefits from investing our money. Risk we don't like. People, by and large, are risk averse. We don't like risk. We seek to avoid it or to manage it, to transfer it in various ways. We'll look at that in more detail uh, a bit later. But anyway, these uh, invested funds end up in the hands of those firms that are able to provide what we regard as the highest risk-adjusted rates of return. That is, those that are most efficient in uh, generating returns uh, relative to the expectations of the investors. Financial markets represent the means and mechanisms by which financial assets are traded. Financial assets represent primarily debt and equity. Those are the claims on business assets. And hopefully you'll remember we have distinguished between debt and equity and 
in three basic aspects. Debt represents a first, uh, well, uh, debt uh, provides uh, or represents, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting my, my terms confused here, provides, uh, a, debt provides a fixed return, while, whereas equity provides a variable return. Um, debt is characterized by a finite term, equity by an infinite term, and debt uh, represents a first claim on income and assets, and equity a residual claim on income and assets. It took me a little while to get all that out, but Saturday morning, so maybe you can understand. Um, so anyway, that's financial markets are basically the arena in which financial assets, uh, stocks and bonds and such, are traded. Financial markets facilitate the transfer of funds from those who have excess funds, that is more funds relative to their current needs, to those who have a shortage relative to current needs. It's important to realize for every for someone to be a borrower, there has to be a lender. And so on every type of a loan arrangement, someone is borrowing, someone is necessary lending, necessarily lending. And it's important to note that whatever rate the borrower is paying uh, on, their, uh, on their loan, that's the rate that the lender is receiving or earning. That, again, it's a, uh, let's say a, a fact that will come back uh, we'll come back to will mean more uh, have more significance for us later on. Let's take a quick look. This is a very broad brush look at the U.S. financial market system. Financial institutions assist in the transfer of capital between those who have more than they currently need, that are primarily households, that is people with skin, and those who currently need more than they have. Well, this is primarily business and government. There are three basic ways funds get from those who have more than they need to those who need more than they have. First of all is the direct transfer of funds. This is a situation in which an investor or lender deals directly with the investee or borrower. You know, a lot of small businesses begin by a person who has an idea and a commitment to realizing that, um, that uh, dream or that enterprise, and so they um, max out, or let's say they eat up their savings, they max out their credit cards, maybe uh, even eliminate their uh, retirement funds, they uh, mortgage their home, whatever. But after they do that and they have to go outside their own resources, then they will uh, go to friends, neighbors, uh, acquaintances, um, and they will deal with them directly. In this particular transfer, then funds go directly to the business and the claims or securities go directly to the investor or lender. There is no middleman, nobody in between, no institution is involved here. And this is usually, as I said, the, the very first source of financing for most very small enterprises. The second we'll look at is an indirect transfer through an investment banker. Now this doesn't uh, happen necessarily as the next step. As a matter of fact, this is going to be a, uh, after a firm has um, grown fairly large. Um, the investment banker will assist the issuer in several several tasks. Now, the investment banker, I want to maybe use an example here. Stevens uh, is the uh, largest off-Wall Street investment banking firm uh, in the U.S., happens to be located here, of course, in Arkansas. Let's say that Tyson, you know, the chicken producer, wants to raise uh, $50 million to build some new facilities. And they've decided, let's say with the help of Stevens, that they, they want to uh, issue some type of security. Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself because the fact is, generally speaking, Tyson would go to, say, Stevens, an investment banker, and say, uh, look at our financial statements. You know, you're in the, the market every day. Tell us you know, how we can raise uh, the money that we, that we need. And Stevens, Inc. has a slew of accountants and a slew of um, uh, attorneys and they will help the uh, uh, Tyson to negotiate the waters between, well, with the Securities and Exchange Commission and the public. Uh, Stevens, uh, being an investment banker, helps play matchmaker between companies like Tyson that need uh, a lot of money like this. They need to go to the public and, uh, or to get large amounts of funds. Um, and, of course, Tyson itself, that, that is, they intervene there to help to place this issue. The first thing they might do is then to evaluate um, Tyson's financial position and performance and help them decide what type of security they actually need to issue, whether it's debt or equity. And if so, 
you know, talk about what terms or help them to identify the, the terms that would be appropriate for that issue. So the invest, investment banker assists the issuer in selecting the type of securities to issue, meeting the considerable regulatory requirements that are uh, imposed by the Securities and Exchange Commission, and then of course uh, playing matchmaker to help actually place or sell the issue. Now they don't do this for the fun uh, of it or the health, their health, they do this for the fees that they're going to earn. The funds will go from the investor or lender, let's say the Ford Foundation wants to buy some of this, uh, let's say it happens to be some bonds that uh, Tyson is going to issue. The funds go from the Ford Foundation through the investment bank, through Stevens, to the issuer, that is to Tyson. Tyson will take a commission that's, let's say, average is about 5%. It's going to be a smaller percentage commission for a larger issue than it will be for a, uh, a smaller issue. But let's say 5% is an average. That means if Tyson wants to raise $50 million, they need to actually issue then about 50, let's say $53 million uh, proceeds from the issue uh, in order to you know, get the $50 million after Stevens takes its approximate 5% cut. Now notice here there's only one type of claim issued in the process, that's of the firm itself. Um, that is the, the uh, bonds issued by Tyson. Uh, the Stevens simply serves as a flow through for those securities and for the money. Now the third type of transfer is through a financial intermediary. That's the, actually this is, uh, we're used to dealing with these all the time, Regions or First Community Bank, Compass Bank, whatever they might be. These are commercial banks. Uh, commercial banks, mutual funds, insurance companies, these are financial intermediaries. They receive the deposits of investors or lenders and they, um, uh, they intermediate, they uh, will reformulate that into loans, into in insurance coverage, into investment accounts, let's say mutual funds and such. And what's important here is when you buy when you put your money into a bank, for instance, and then that bank turns around and lends that money to, to say, somebody buying a car or funding an inventory increase, two types of claims exist in this arrangement. Securities issued by the business, that is the loan that's held by the bank, and then the issue, the securities held by you, namely the claim on the bank. The same thing goes with mutual funds. A mutual fund is an investment company that will take your investment money and it will issue you shares basically in the fund and then it will turn around and it will buy shares in you know individual companies uh, such as Amazon or a Ford Motor Company or you know all down the line you will actually hold shares in Ford and Amazon indirectly you don't own shares in those companies you own shares in the fund and so uh, actually two types of claims exist in those circumstances and that's important for us to to realize. 